first bit in binary it would become 1 1 or in our base 10 it would become 3 so uh, okay so Fenwick trees of course balance binary trees do not need any bitwise operations Fenwick trees requires some amount of bitwise understanding and uh, pr I'll, I'll try to cover it as we go a round bracket b that means close open that is b is not included a is included so my question is how many elements are there in square bracket a comma b quick <laughs> a minus b plus 1 I'm sorry b minus a plus 1 okay this is our required info and uh, so bitwise operations essentially what really happens is when I, s I give 10 uh, the computer stores it in binary form that is 10 is essentially 8, pl 8 plus 2 so it will be uh, 1010 zero, one, zero. So this is the binary representation of 10 and this is how my computer understands it. This is how it is stored in memory. So uh, let us say I have another number 8 which is 1000. Zero, zero, zero. So now I define some operations on these two. Uh, the operations I define are AND, OR, ZOR. We will just keep to th stick to these three as at least for Fenwick trees you will just need these three. So I will just stick to these three. So 10 and 8 would essentially mean Okay, uh, I'm sure that all of you know what an AND gate is, an AND, and operation is, an OR operation is, and an XOR operation is. Okay, all right, so uh, I'll just then quickly write down what its AND would be. Its AND would be 8, its OR would be 10, and its XOR would be, this would go off, and this would be there, so it would be 2. So uh, this is AND, OR, XOR. So essentially, when I do a bitwise operation, what you're doing is you're just, you're just doing the operation on each bit of the number. So, uh, alright, so uh, can, does anyone know how negative numbers are stored on, let's say, these computers? Means there are multiple representations, but one representation is very widely followed, at least in all the ACM. Our primary objective is ACM, so all the ACM computers and all your regionals, you will have a very standard computer in which negative numbers are stored in one specific way. So, assume I, uh, I want to store minus one. Can anyone tell me what the bit? wise bit representation of minus one would be uh, all right a two's complement so uh, in two power uh, that would be like okay can okay assume i have x where x is positive not x plus one okay i'm running out of questions before we set up so uh, <laughs> okay so uh, yeah so what is interesting about this not x plus one is Okay, I'll then now right away start with the material and once we get, uh, I could probably then just go quickly on it. Okay, so uh, Fenwick tree means every data structure you have some objectives. What should you accomplish with the data structure? So what are you accomplishing with a Fenwick, okay, uh, Fenwick tree is also called as binary index trees. The idea of Fenwick tree is you can compute cumulative sum really quick, a cumulative function really quick. What I mean by a cumulative function is f of let's say I assume that my function is sum, then uh, the function that I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to compute is a. Let's say I, I ha I'm okay. The problem statement is I'm given an array a, and the a has n numbers, and a has n numbers. So uh, and I'll be using one base index instead of zero base index because of the ease of use and uh, some very basic boundary cases. So I have an array a a one to n which contains n n elements one base and it's of type int which of course can be extended to any any other type so uh, and the problem that i am asking is okay the operation that i must support is i must ch i'll be able to change one query that i must be able to support is change j comma k what this means is change the L okay so i am given an array a which contains n elements and for simplicity I'm assuming that I am using one base index and uh, the question that I ask is one uh, one query that I ask is sum i which returns which returns a naught plus a1 plus up to ai that is a cumulative sum up to ai and another thing that I I can do, of course, if it was, okay, can anyone tell me how to do this if it was just this sum? That is, my query was just some AI and I was not updating my array, how would you go about doing it? I understand this is very basic, but then, <laughs> uh, how would you go about, out, like, my question would be, uh, I and you must output the cumulative sum AI. 
how would you do it assume that uh, the number of operations are fairly large much larger than the uh, array size yeah that would take order n so let's say you have q queries that would be qn but we want better than qn you can of course pre-process or do whatever you want but idea is to get better than qn probably o1 probably log n something like that all right. Oh, yeah. So he says store the prefix sums, which is like store another array as where uh, s of i is equal to s of i minus one plus a i. So that should essentially solve the problem. But now this would solve the problem, and it would solve it in O n, which is like the best possible we can get. But what I'm defining now is I define a new operation update, which updates update. Uh, let's say I give an index, comma I give a new val, which updates a bracket index to this new value. Uh, 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 my handwriting is not that legible. New L. Now, after I do this update, now uh, this uh, prefix sums would not work. Why it would not work is, of course, obvious because uh, I'll, ha I'll have to uh, update n prefix sums because uh, AI would be for any for any s greater than i, AI it would matter. That is, if I update i, then for any s element of s which is greater than i, I'll have to update it. So okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the prerequisites are uh, this is just for uh, fan victories, and these two are for your uh, next topic, which is balanced binary trees. So yeah, go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, what is must do is you must read the bit. What does the data structure support? I think I gave an idea idea of it before itself, but uh, I'll just go through it again. A, 1 to n is an array of elements and the query supported is cumulative sum i from, cumulative sum from 1 to n index and update operation is change value to of any array element. Now, uh, please note that if I have the cumulative sum, I can also find uh, the sum between any range. So, for example, sum between A to B would be B F B minus F A minus 1. So, yeah, we, next slide. So, uh, binary index trees are also called Fenwick trees. I think his name is Peter Fenwick, the guy who found, uh, guy who found it. So, uh, the primary and the only hard thing in binary index trees is isolating the last bit. So, uh, isolating the last bit is what you must do in Fenwick tree. And if you can achieve this, then you are almost done with Fenwick tree. That is the only hard step in the whole data structure is isolating the last bit. So, one way to isolate the last bit is x and minus x. I, of course. Uh, what I want is, for example, if I said 10, so what I want, I will just give an f of 10 and it should return 2. That is, I'm writing in binary. I'm writing in binary. I'm given f. I must have a function f such that given 10, it should return 2. That is, 2 power the lowest bit. Proof is clear and I think it's pretty basic. If you just work, work out once, you'll be able to figure it out. So, minus x essentially comes to a dash 1b when x is a a 1b. So, if I do now, what happens if I do x and minus x? A and a dash get cancelled because they are complements. So, of course, every, of course, I'm, I'm talking of a string of bits, but since they are complements, every single bit will cancel out each other. One and one would be one, and b and b both are zeros. So, and of zeros is zeros. So, essentially, what I am left with now is the last bit position at which it was set. Only that is left, and everything else is not left. So, of course, there are many other ways of doing it. So this is another way of doing it, which you can prove which I can give you as a homework exercise because it's it's fairly simple again x minus 1 will only perturb the perturb this one and this will become 0 and this will become all ones and then once you just work out the details it should be fairly simple and okay Fenwick tree uh, for simplicity we'll assume n is a power of 2 but almost that is I don't think I'm using that assumption anywhere in my program so uh, but just to get the basic idea clear, now we'll assume n is a power of 2. Note that even if n is a power of 2, that is, assume I have an array of 1 to n where n is not a power of 2. Let's say n is 3. And uh, the next power of 2 would be from, would occur between n and 2n. So because it occurs between n and 2n, even if I, st I allocate the array until I get a power of 2, I'm essentially using linear space. That is, at most it will be theta 2n. So I'm essentially using linear space. So this assumption does not hurt in almost unless you are working with a very very sick time limit it does not hurt but uh, we'll again uh, at the end know how to extend it further to non powers of 2 so I define a new array f3 f3 of i stores the cumulative sum from this is again an error it's 2 power of 2 power low bit of i integers before i so let for example what would f bit of 10 store f bit of 10 would store 
ten, two numbers including 10. So that way I asked that question, so it would be 9 and 10. That is 10 minus 2 plus 1. So uh, it would store 9 comma 10. It would, it would store the value of 9 comma 10. So from this, what you can directly infer is that uh, when it's a power of 2, it will store the complete uh, complete sum. That is, if f, f3 of 4, f3 of 4 would store a, you know, a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. Because 4 minus low bit of 4 is essentially 0. So uh, yeah, it stores 2 power low bit of i integers before i. That is how I define f3. I'm not telling how to do it. Let's just assume that I have defined f3 this way. Next slide. So yeah, this is just a uh, diagram which shows the range. For example, 16 directly covers, low bit of 16 is 16, so 16 covers all the elements. 15, 15 is an odd number. Every odd number has one bit set. So uh, 15 would just cover, so the low bit of 15 would be one. So 15 would just cover itself. 14 would cover two because uh, uh, its low bit is one zero. 13, uh, all odd numbers of course would be covering only itself and all. E For example, four again covers completely. Uh, six would be a good example. Six covers six and five, and then uh, you will have to do something else. So this is just an example of the ranges covered for each value. So uh, yeah. So what is the iteration that you do for a fan victory? Uh, the iteration that you do is you just remove the low bit. You uh, so I told you that it stores uh, uh, low bit elements from uh, low bit elements. So 13 f f of 13 or f3 of 13 would store only 13 because the, uh, because one bit is set. f3 of 12 would store four elements, which is uh, 12 to 9, 9 to 12, and then. Uh, uh, so what I'm doing is at each at each point I'll just uh, means my F3 would give me what the value is until that point and once I remove the low bit I can go to the next and then I'll I'll add uh, the answer for the next low bit to explain it further. Can okay, go to the next slide? Okay, so I'll define the query. I uh, let's take 13 as an example. 13 would be uh, yeah, can you go back? Uh, 1101. So I must compute the cumulative sum from 0 to 13. Uh, the idea is cumulative sum, once you compute cumulative sum, you can of course do a lot, means that can be used as a primitive to compute other sums. So cumulative sum is what we are trying to compute. So 13, according to my definition, would cover 13 to 13 minus 1 plus 1. 13 minus 1 plus 1, so which is 13. So 13 would just cover itself. So I take uh, my result, result plus equal to F13 f3 of 13 now so i have i must now compute sum of 13 integers i have computed sum of 1 so how many i have computed i just remove from my index so now i must i remove my low bit element from my binary representation so i am left with 12 so uh, 12 how much does 12 cover its low bit is this which is 4 so 12 covers four numbers what could the four numbers be so f12 would be equal to f9 plus f10 plus f11 i'm not i'm not told you how we are computing this i'm just telling you if we are given the fenwick tree how would you output the answer that is i'm assuming that we are given the fenwick tree i'm 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 teaching the update later and query before so that you first get an idea of what you're trying to accomplish before you go into the update part otherwise it will be i'll have to explain both and then you'll understand that all, all right it works so uh, f9 f10 f11 plus f12 this is what f okay i'm sorry uh, what i mean is a f12 stores a9 plus a10 plus a11 plus a12 uh, f13 stores a13 so by using 12 i have computed this number and by using 13 i have computed this number so if i now remove this bit and if i put this also as 0 i'm left with 1000 0, 0, which is 8 and since 8 is a perfect power of 2 8 would give me the range from 1 to 8 so uh, in three computations i have essentially found the answer of a f1 a1 plus a, a2 up to a12 so uh, can anyone tell me what the time complexity would be as in, is it still not clear yeah you can go to the code so uh, yeah this is not this one so uh, what i do is i this is the so for example in query of x which gives me the cumulative sum from x so what i do is i set result equal to zero and i just uh, i just accumulate my sum on result so result plus equal f3 of i uh, this is f3 of x. 
uh, result plus equal f3 of x and uh, means do this until x greater than 0 and uh, 